Okay, well, I want to consider the three pillars of water board. And I'd like to ask you, has anybody had a memorable experience sitting on a chair or a stool with four legs that one of the legs was either shorter or longer than the other three? Do you remember how you sort of did that? Well, water board was founded on three pillars, scholarship, leadership, and service. Um, as mentioned in the class of 2006, we're right here today with an average GPA of 3.7. GPA of 3.7. And then most people, when they hear mortarboard, automatically assume mortarboard members have gained and maintained a high level of scholarship. That's a killer. The student has no chance whatsoever of being considered for membership in mortarboard unless he or she is well above the average in scholarship. The definition that I picked up somewhere along the way of average, the best of the worst, and the worst of the best. Anybody want to be average? Waterboards? No, for sure. Okay. Leadership. A Supreme Court justice is supposed to have said that pornography is hard to define, but you know what you see. The word leadership is an abstract word which is very difficult to define. I'm going to couch leadership in terms of the word power. It has been my experience that if you don't study the sources and uses of power, you'll be a victim of power. So, and even academic and researchers cannot escape this fact. My wife will attest to that, by the way, the lady in the middle years of my life. And uh, she's part of the reason that I'm here today. Thank you for watching. What's the definition of power in an in in interpersonal sense? Well, I define it by business operations management students as the ability to get someone to do something they might not want to do. I believe there are three key sources of interpersonal power. First, power comes from personal confidence and experience and a skill or capability required for the organization or group to succeed. I don't believe more board members will ever have any problem with this aspect of leadership. Power comes from controlling a source of money for a project being championed by the other person. And third, you have a positional authority and hierarchy and you could easily say when you need to, my way or thy way. Fortunately, the use of this type of power is declining because of more women in the workforce who have, as a result of nature or nurture or both, developed valuable nurturing skills. Put a number of men in a room and a short period of hierarchy is formed with the alpha male at the top. As is true in almost all cases of anything, testosterone has its positive and minuses. In today's world, hierarchies work okay in the armed forces, but elsewhere, Nursing is far better skill to have. Sorry, men, but my advice to you is to drop your need to be the alpha male, develop more nursing skill, seek consensus more often if you want to become a revered leader. And I'll drop my personal experience for that. Let's see, because that's going to take a little bit extra time. Mm -hmm. We'll go on to service. When I worked for IBM, we were constantly reminded by management with their high expectations. Because no matter what our performance was to date, the daily question was, what have you done on you lately? When you earn and accept the honor of being recognized as water board members, never forget that the world is asking you that question every day. I'm a strong proponent of the concept that motivation comes from within. Perhaps you would consider rephrasing that question and ask yourself often, what have I done lately for the improvement of myself my family, my profession, humans in general, and the world we live in. When new members are selected for membership in Water Board, the faculty advisor is required to be present. In March 2004, I went to the selection of the Water Board class of 2005. I was absolutely astounded by the involvement on and off campus by the candidates. Strong evidence of leadership and service in addition to scholarship is just coming better. This past month, I again witnessed a selection of the 39 members of the class of 2006. Again, I was astounded by the on and off campus involvement and service to others. I regret because I'm retiring from the faculty at the end of the year, and I may not get to know the class of 2006, as well as I knew the class of four and the class of five. But you can count on my attendance 
at your deliberation as you elect the officers of your, of your class. I asked the class of 2006 to look around and realize that one of you will be elected president of more board for this next academic year. Other officers will be elected to support you in your efforts to make more board a continuing outstanding example of the three pillars of your own campus. Clean, when you carried my office the other day, about two weeks ago or so, saying that you represent the committee planning this occasion and asked me the keynote speaker for this year's initiation, my very first reaction was Peter. Why me? What could an adjunct instructor in college business have to say that would be meaningful to a group of current and future exceptional scholars and leaders? Have you heard my attempt to give you a few ideas to consider? I'm going to try four more. I'll start by asking you to think about what you consider to be the four most critical problems facing our world. My list may be very different from yours, but please give me credit for 71 plus years of experience. 50 years from now, your list is very likely to be very different from your list today. So here's my four. Ethics. We often hear that ethics is a dilemma. I have a very simple definition of ethics. If I did something today, and that act was truthfully reported in the front page of the local newspaper the next day with my mother and be proud of it. If I can't answer yes, then it's probably not ever. I believe all of you would agree that the practice of exceptional ethics by everyone, especially our business leader, is a real need. Humans by nature agree that we have to find a way of changing that natural tendency. Easy to say on my part, I understand, but hard to overcome. The Water Board has an active education program about ethics. Get involved. I propose a needed active service for next year's wonderful campus seminars on ethics. And now I'm going to maybe step over the boundary a little bit, but that's fair with you, please. The Bush administration has at least one ethical problem. Dismantling environmental protection laws is unconscionable. If you disagree, be sure your children and grandchildren somehow avoid mercury ingestion from the environment. Otherwise, our world will have more and more people with lower IQs and fewer and fewer candidates for more of them. The future of democracy means I believe many of you would consider the spread of peace and democracy around the world, and especially the Arab world, to be high on the list. Yes, democracy is messy but it still appears to be the best way to organize government. Provided what Kevin Phillips, Phillips and other, many others are reporting to be occurring inside the development. In other words, inside the development of play in Washington, D.C. What is happening in our nation's capital and the nation's mindset toward today occurred in Spain, causing its decline in the 16th century. The Dutch followed Spain in the same cycle for similar reasons about 150 years later. The British Empire rose peak in decline about 100 years after the Dutch. And according to a study by Toynbee, 18 other civilizations had, had risen and fallen. And his conclusion was that this, the problem was of similarity to what's happening in the United States today. Is the United States nearing already, already and apparently inevitable decline? Many of you may answer that yes. I don't know. I won't ask you for racing. But are you aware that economists estimate that as high as 60% of the assets of this country are owned or controlled by one-tenth of one percent of the population? To climb through too much success and a change from production and innovation to a few people living lavishly on the proceeds of accumulated wealth, while everyone else works harder and harder for less and less, seems to be an unavoidable happenstance in nations. In the U.S. today, outsourcing the jobs to countries where less expensive labor can be found is certainly a problem occurring, and we would love to see those very bitter bonuses for their wise decisions. I'll leave it to you to study the situation inside of itself if there's anything you want to or can do about it. Third, global warming. 
We need to solve the problem of greenhouse gases, especially CO2 being created by the consumption of hydrocarbon fuels. In the U.S., you can see for yourself we waste a lot of fuel by driving bigger than needed vehicles. Our hunger is cool. We see big vehicles with one person driving and no passengers to up. And consider that China and India represent 2.4 billion people. And as China and India, also Russia and uh, other undeveloped, less developed countries uh, become or want to become more mobile, we are going to have to have hydrogen propelled cars and trucks. If you wish to call me a tree hugger, that's okay. Deforestation has to be reined in. We have to find a way to manage our need for wood and the need for preserving balance. I see no reason that we cannot manage forests as we manage the field of wheat. We just have to accept the fact that trees take a little longer. Balance is possible, but more to more responsible leadership is an absolute message. And it says it. Our last item is based on a question the President asked me in 1972. Bob, what do you think is the price of the last gallon of gas in this country? Well, the more I thought about it, and the first thing, I, my first thought was, where's he coming from? The more I thought about it, the more I realized he was right on target. Natural resources do tend to be finite, and recycling and substitutions are proving to be economical for many natural resources. But in your lifetime, clean, potable, drinkable water, in other words, will become the most critical resource on this planet. Certainly not alone in our prediction that water, not crude oil, will be the source of future conflicts between nations and even tribes inside or along borders of nations. What are you going to do about water supply and its equitable distribution? Not crazy. Congratulations again to the Water Board class of 2005-2006. To all members of the Water Board and all our guests today, I wish you happiness and continued success wherever you go. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time.